Hi everyone, thank you for your interest in this subject. I am Richard, I'm the co-author of this paper, and in order to make your life easier, I'll rush through the paper and explain the intuition about the architectures, and hopefully do that within five minutes. The main focus of the research is to discriminate between subjects with the autism spectrum disorder, ASD, and controls. ASD subjects do not have a structurally different brain, but instead only having a functionally different one. Therefore, we use functional fMRI, which is a 3D view of the brain, um, and Parasot et al. in 2018 already proposed a method using a growth convolutional neural network um, in which subjects could strengthen each other's features. So let's dig into that. This is a, uh, a figure from our paper. It gives an overview of the models and it demonstrates the relations between the three models we've investigated. We will explore one model at a time, starting with the Parasite model, our baseline. This is the PGCM. It consists out of two parts. Uh, the left-hand side prepares the data and the right-hand side actually learns. This is a GCM. Here we have high-dimensional fMRI brain scans. And to overcome this high-dimensionality, the voxels are grouped into areas designed by experts. Uh, in the top left corner, three of these so-called illnesses are illustrated. The varying time dimension is reduced by creating a similarity matrix of how similar the regions activate over time. When flattening this matrix, you get a small feature factor. However, it's not small enough, and a rich regressor is used to reduce the dimensionality to just an order of a thousand. Another aspect are that the edges of the graph are based on similarities between subjects. This is based on metadata such as age, gender, and acquisition size. Now we have the edges based on a similar metadata and the vertices or the nodes based on the feature effects of the fMRI data. This orange box shows the actual prediction part of the whole architecture. It is a GCN. Um, and it remains unchanged in the different architectures. This system works good. However, the metadata are arbitrarily chosen. The age, for example. How similar should it be? Uh, should we also include a gender and a side? And if so, how strong should each weigh? The intuition of using these similarities is that similar brains will behave similarly and thus have similar features that can strengthen each other. So, we will now use the actual brain's hardware to do so. Here we have the SGCN. Uh, we use the structural MRI, MRI data and use these similarities for the edges of the graph. Even though this is not a video, the dimensionality is still way too high to do a reasonable attempt to calculate the similarity. Therefore, the variational autoencoder was used to encode the data into a low representation. Um, which still kept the uh, relational information between the encodings intact. Using a low dimensional uh, representation, um, a similarity matrix was created and used on these graphs. Uh, the result is better in, in predicting without the need of metadata, and well, it makes more sense. Um, there's still some expert knowledge left that we can remove, uh, the grouping of the voxels. So finally, this SS uh, GCN model uh, will automatically do the dimensionality reduction for us without need of an atlas. We still have to reduce the fourth temporal dimension, and this is done by taking a sort of average of the uh, activity of each voxel without grouping them. So this results in a 3D brain instead of this 3D video. The 3D convolutional neural net, the CNN, will be trained to classify for ASD or not. The goal here is not to get an excellent representation or an excellent predictive power, um, but instead we want to use this um, representation from the hidden layers. So by removing this final layer, the CNN will become a dimensionality reduction model. So the high dimensional data will now be represented in a low dimensional factor, which can then be used as a feature factor in the graph. We observe that new proposed methods uh, mostly outperform the Paris GCM model, uh, method up to 18.8% better, uh, while being more general and robust. Thank you for your attention and have fun reading.